the intermediary, and they're here, they're back in LA, and Zip takes a phone call, and it's Puffy on the other end of the line, hands the phone to Keefy D, and Keefy D, I'm sorry, Puffy asks him, man, was that us? Was it, you know, what just happened out there? Keefy D's like, yeah. I don't, well, did you just hear what he said? I didn't catch it. Hold on, did he say something about Diddy admitting that he put out a hit to get Pac killed? I don't know. Go back, go back, go back. Oh. Is he exposing something that we don't know? <laughs> Y'all heard that? Is he exposing the Illuminati? I did hear it, bro. <laughs> was a driver, and uh, Baby Lane and Freaky were in the back seat. We were just all in the car together. Just okay. Like this was the white Cadillac. Yeah. Okay. All over the internet, his bodyguard said that he had something to do with it. And I never, like I said, me and Puppy is nowhere near friends. After 27 long years of yearning for closure, Tupac Shakur's family finally sees a glimmer of hope. Dwayne Keith Davis, also known as Keefy D, has been apprehended in connection with Tupac Shakur's assassination. In the realm of rap, the enigma surrounding Tupac's untimely demise has persisted for close to three decades. Over the years, countless individuals have sought to unravel the mystery, giving rise to a myriad of theories, each compelling in its own right. Yet amidst this wealth of speculation, discord still reigns supreme, as conflicting narratives continue to vie for prominence. When I heard that Tupac died, I was cooking in a restaurant, and tickets were piling up, and I'm like, I don't care, fire me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, that was devastating. Despite the long-awaited arrest of Keefy D in connection with Tupac Shakur's assassination, closure remains elusive. One might assume that with such a significant development, the case would be resolved. However, the reality is far more complex. Many still cling to the belief that the true perpetrator behind the demise of the legendary rapper remains at large, with suspicions heavily centered on Diddy. A prevailing notion suggests that Diddy allegedly commissioned Tupac's assassination by offering a hefty sum of money, a claim that extends beyond Tupac to encompass other prominent figures such as Biggie Smalls. While these allegations persist, they remain firmly entrenched in the realm of speculation and conjecture. It's worth noting that conspiracy theories are just one facet of the multifaceted discourse surrounding this enduring mystery. The bullets are flying. Tupac, uh, Tupac and Shook's car get, get all shot up. Was there, and I, I'd heard different versions of the story, but the one version I heard was that the other, that, that their entourage started shooting back. The notion implicating Diddy and Tupac's assassination is backed by substantial evidence, drawing credibility from renowned figures within the industry. Eminem, among these influential voices, has taken a divisive stance against Diddy, breaking his silence on the matter. Reflecting on Tupac's profound impact, Eminem's poignant words underscore the gravity of the situation, saying, Tupac was the first rapper that I felt could really make you weep. He was just like, oh my God, that's me. Since the tragic event, Diddy has remained a central figure in the investigation, consistently emerging as the prime suspect. Despite the complexities that arose through the probes, the prevailing sentiment among fans and investigators alike steadfastly pointed to Diddy's involvement. This steadfast belief persisted, undeterred by the intricacies of the case, highlighting the enduring conviction that Diddy played a pivotal role in Tupac's demise. Indeed, Eminem's track, Kill Shot, caused quite a stir upon its release, particularly due to its unexpected mention of Diddy, leaving listeners intrigued by the underlying message. However, recent developments have offered insight into Eminem's rationale. Released approximately six years ago, Killshot ignited controversy by alleging Diddy's involvement in the tragic passing of hip-hop icon Tupac Shakur. Tupac, just 25 years old at the time, succumbed to a fatal shooting, sustaining four gunshot wounds during an altercation on the Las Vegas Strip in 1996. With the perpetrator still at large, a multitude of conspiracy theories has emerged, some even suggesting that Tupac may have staged his own demise. <laughs> Puck work for the government? Man, never, Pac, I, know, I ain't never Pac, seen no shit like this. Pac is alive, bro. His name is Black Haze now, bro. What? Is that when he, when he, let, Hey, everyone. In September 2018, Eminem dropped Kill Shot, a track widely recognized as a direct jab at rapper Machine Gun Kelly amidst their ongoing feud. Within the diss track, Eminem delivered provocative lines such as, The day you put out a hit is the day Diddy admits he put the hit out 
that got packed lifeless. Despite wrapping up with a playful nod towards Diddy with Eminem quipping, and I'm just playing Diddy, you know I love you, the remark stirred backlash from fellow musicians. Marshall Mathers, known by his stage name Eminem, and then 45 years old, faced criticism for his pointed commentary. The day Diddy admits that he put the hit out, the got my kill, eh? I'm sick of you being... The day that Diddy admit that he got pot killed. Oh, uh, I see what you did there. Hey, my guy. Hey, oh, my one guy. Time. One more time. Hey, Make sure. While some fans dismissed it as mere rap banter, others delved deeper, sensing a hidden narrative. As it turns out, those who pursued the backstory were on to something. There exists a compelling tale waiting to be unveiled. Speculation abounds that Eminem might eventually come forward, presenting the public with evidence linking Diddy to Tupac's untimely demise. Should this revelation come to fruition, Diddy would find himself unable to evade accountability. Such a connection would not only serve justice, but also offer solace to Tupac's long-suffering family, finally bringing closure to their quest for truth and retribution. It took rapper-turned-business mogul Sean Combs, better known as Diddy, some time to address Eminem's remarks. Notably, Diddy had previously managed Notorious B.I.G., who tragically fell victim to a drive-by shooting in Los Angeles just a year after Tupac's similar fate. Both crimes remain unsolved, contributing to the ongoing controversy surrounding these pivotal events in hip-hop history. Amidst the ongoing saga, a persistent theory has finally found validation. What was once mere speculation has now been affirmed by a chilling admission from a hitman. It's no longer conjecture. It's cold, hard truth. Diddy, it's been revealed, enlisted the services of a hitman to orchestrate Tupac's demise. Keefe D, implicated in connection with Tupac's assassination and apprehended by authorities several months back, has been remarkably candid about his involvement. Despite a veil of secrecy shrouding certain details, Keefe D's admission led to his incarceration for the crime. However, one critical fact remains largely overlooked. Keefe D has consistently pointed the finger at Diddy as the mastermind behind Tupac's assassination. Giving this damning revelation, one might wonder why Diddy has yet to face justice. Remarkably, Keefe D has initially disclosed Diddy's involvement during interrogations in the 1990s, confessing to receiving a hefty sum from the mogul to carry out the hit on the 25-year-old rapper. Clearly, the narrative runs deeper than surface appearances suggest. That's what the FBI said. The FBI said that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You guys never got any money? Never. For anything. Nothing. Upon closer examination, it becomes evident that Keefe D is not alone in his belief regarding Diddy's culpability in Tupac's assassination. Corroborating voices include an LAPD investigator whose scrutiny into the matter unveiled compelling connections implicating Diddy in the crime. Remarkably, this detective, though initially tasked with probing the passing of another musician, adamantly asserted Diddy's involvement in Tupac's demise. Moreover, amidst these discussions, another theory emerged, shedding light on Diddy's association with yet another iconic figure from the 1990s rap scene, Biggie Smalls, also known as Notorious B.I.G. It's been suggested that Diddy played a significant role in producing hit songs for Biggie Smalls, further entangling him in the intricate web of hip-hop lore. Another case that lingered unresolved for a considerable duration was that of Notorious B.I.G. through his mother, Valletta Wallace, who persisted in applying pressure for answers. In response, the LAPD intensified its investigation, unearthing mounting evidence implicating Diddy as the prime suspect. Similar dynamics unfolded in the aftermath of Tupac's demise. Valletta emerged as a vocal critic, challenging the public perception of Diddy and alleging his role in her son's demise. She revealed a stark contrast between Biggie's perception of Diddy as a trusted confidant and the reality of Diddy's alleged exploitation of her son's talents. Tragically, this exploitation supposedly contributed to Biggie's untimely demise. Tupac's story echoed a similar narrative. In September of 1996, despite initial plans to leave the city, Tupac opted to stay, swayed by the persuasion of his close friend Mike Tyson. Their intended rendezvous following Tyson's boxing match never materialized, leaving Tupac and Tyson unable to fulfill their plans to hang out. When questioned about the events surrounding Tupac's shooting, Mike Tyson recalled the aftermath. Days later, I was at home, tending to my newborn and embracing fatherhood. 
Regrettably, I missed our planned meeting with Tupac due to my responsibilities as a new parent. Despite the derailment of their plans, Tupac opted for a night out, eventually finding himself leaning out of his car window for a breath of fresh air. As fate would have it, their vehicle paused at a red light, paralleled by a white Cadillac. Suddenly, gunfire erupted from the Cadillac, injuring Suge Knight and striking Tupac. The rapper found himself in the company of Suge Knight within the vehicle at the time of the attack. White Cadillac, arm came out the back seat and started letting off. What, what went through your head when you saw that? They shoot my nigga. You guys tossed him in the back seat. And uh, Bubble Up was a driver and uh, Baby Lane and Freaky were in the back seat. We were just all in the car together. Okay. This was the white Cadillac. Yeah. Tupac remained unconscious for six days following the attack, his body eventually succumbing to the severity of his injuries. With his passing, the world mourned the loss of one of its most iconic rap artists. Keefe D and Valletta Wallace are not alone in their belief regarding Diddy's involvement in Tupac's demise. Eminem, revered as one of the greatest rappers of all time, stands firmly in agreement. Sources close to the rapper suggest that Eminem, too, entertains the notion that Diddy orchestrated Tupac's assassination. It's alleged that Eminem suspects Diddy of offering Keefe D a substantial sum in exchange for carrying out the hit on Tupac. Moreover, rumors swirl regarding Diddy's lavish spending supposedly exceeding $1 million to retain Eminem's loyalty. While Eminem has remained largely silent on the matter over the years, subtle hints in his recent remarks hint at a deeper understanding of the events surrounding Tupac's tragic demise. The narrative surrounding Diddy's alleged involvement in the passing of Tupac and other prominent figures appears compelling, given the widespread claims and assertions from numerous supporters. However, law enforcement authorities maintain a divergent perspective, despite vocal dissent from his supporters. Various factors may contribute to this disparity, but chief among them seems to be Diddy's perceived influence and intimidation tactics, instilling fear among those who might speak out against him. Nevertheless, a shift is underway, with growing criticism directed towards him. Presently, a shared curiosity grips us all, the desire to uncover what Eminem knows about Diddy and his potential connection to Tupac Shakur's tragic demise. In 2006, the case of Biggie Smalls, renowned as the Notorious B.I.G., resurfaced following a lawsuit initiated by his mother, Valletta Wallace. Seeking approximately $500 million in damages, Wallace's legal action was grounded in the enduring conspiracy theory alleging a cover-up by the Los Angeles Police Department surrounding her son's tragic assassination. Assigned to investigate this reopened case was LAPD detective Greg Kading, whose inquiries led to the discovery of startling revelations implicating Sean Diddy Combs in the demise of Tupac Shakur. Detective Kading's meticulous investigation unearthed a pivotal link between the tragic demise of Tupac and Biggie Smalls. While delving into the circumstances surrounding Biggie's assassination, Kading stumbled upon compelling evidence intertwining the two cases. Following three years of exhaustive inquiry, Detective Kading arrived at a shocking conclusion. He posed that Diddy had orchestrated a million-dollar hit on both Tupac and Suge Knight, stemming from the highly publicized feud involving himself and Biggie. Basically, my freedom and my, my company, by them saying, I don't want to have Tupac killed. Then it came to the Biggie story. When it came to the Biggie situation, now I was out in the county jail, but after that happened, it was from the county jail. Kading's findings unravel a labyrinthian network of connections involving the music mogul and his supposed gang affiliations in Los Angeles. He alleges that Diddy enlisted the services of a Crips gang member named Dwayne Keith Davis to execute the hit. Moreover, Kading asserts that Tupac met his demise at the hands of another Crips gang member, Orlando Baby Lane Anderson. According to Kading's research, the initial plan involved Keefe D carrying out the hit, but circumstances swiftly changed when they unexpectedly found themselves on the wrong side of Tupac's vehicle. Consequently, Keefe D's nephew stepped in and executed the assassination of Tupac, resulting in injuries to Suge Knight as well. Intriguingly, Kading's investigation unveils that Baby Lane had engaged in a physical altercation with Tupac at a Las Vegas casino just hours before the fatal shooting. Additionally, Biggie Small supposedly conveyed information indicating that Faith Evans was privy to Diddy's alleged scheme to eliminate Tupac following the West Coast rapper's shooting. 
Kivi claims that he reached out to Diddy and Evans to disclose their involvement in Tupac's demise. Surprisingly, Detective Kading contends that Biggie Smalls played no part in Tupac's assassination, despite their widely publicized rap feud. According to Kading, Biggie remained unaware of Diddy's alleged plans to harm both Tupac Shakur and his manager, Suge Knight. Nevertheless, tension simmered, and Death Row Records CEO, Suge Knight, supposedly sought retribution by enlisting a Bloods gang member to eliminate the notorious B.I.G. The hitman fatally shot Biggie as he was returning home from a Vibe magazine party. He uh, chased the uh, car down. He also received one gunshot to his, his vehicle. Uh, his car was shot. Uh, he had a black Toyota Supra, and him and another guy, uh, return shots. Fascinatingly, the documentary further poses that Suge Knight personally identified Tupac's assailant, who happened to share an educational background with a hired hitman known as Poochie. According to Kading, Poochie attended the same event as Biggie and opened fire on his vehicle as they departed, ultimately resulting in Biggie's tragic demise en route to the hospital. Despite the thoroughness of the investigation, Kading asserts that it was ultimately abandoned. This decision coincided with the LAPD prevailing in the $500 million lawsuit filed by Biggie's mother, Valletta Wallace, in 2009. After his stint on the investigative task force, Kading was removed from the team due to an internal affairs inquiry unrelated to his work on the case. Although he was later exonerated of any wrongdoing, some still viewed the retired detective with suspicion, labeling him as a rogue cop. It is worth noting that both Orlando Baby Lane Anderson and Wardell Pucci Foos has reportedly passed away from unrelated causes. Consequently, even if the assertions made in the documents hold true, the individuals supposedly responsible for the assassinations of Tupac and Biggie are no longer alive to face legal repercussions. Nonetheless, rumors and speculations persist, with some maintaining the belief that Diddy may have played a role in their passing. Followers of hip-hop and those intrigued by the ongoing feud between Eminem and Diddy have eagerly awaited Diddy's response to Eminem's accusation regarding the media mogul's alleged involvement in Tupac's assassination. According to Joe Budden, Diddy did indeed respond. During a 2020 episode of his podcast, Budden disclosed Diddy's message, indicating that it's handled with nothing to speculate about, nothing to talk about. Pop said it's in his hands, and he said, I can say it. Following this terse exchange, Budden swiftly redirected conversation away from Tupac's tragic demise. Diddy has maintained a stance of silence on the subject until the present day. In 2020, when questioned by Charlemagne, host of The Breakfast Club, regarding allegations of his involvement in orchestrating Tupac's demise, he responded succinctly, stating, We don't talk about things that are nonsense. It's worth noting that Eminem has become associated with 50 Cent. Whether this connection stems from an inherited feud or Eminem's personal animosity towards Diddy remains uncertain. Interestingly, Drake also harbored ill feelings towards Diddy, with the discord originating from Drake's release of the rap song Zero to 100. Allegedly, the beat for the song was initially Diddy's, but he relinquished it and passed it to Metro Boomin. When the track emerged as a potential chart topper, Diddy supposedly took offense, exacerbating the rift between the parties involved. When I heard that Tupac died, I was cooking in the restaurant and tickets were piling up. And I'm like, I don't care. Fire me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that, man, that was devastating. The feud between 50 Cent and Diddy runs deep, with 50 adopting the role of the proverbial boogeyman. 50's animosity extended not only to Diddy, but also to anyone associated with him or who took his side, including Stevie J, Jerule, and notably Jay-Z. However, it's not just me who questions 50's ability to confront him physically. Others like Gene Deal and even Jerule, a longtime rival of 50 Cent, have come to Diddy's defense amidst the accusations. This ongoing support only adds fuel to 50 Cent's continued disdain for Diddy. Whether or not Diddy played a role in Tupac's tragic demise continues to be a topic of ongoing speculation and debate. It's imperative to base our judgments and accusations on credible sources and evidence when dealing with such grave matters. While investigations into these events have generated various theories and claims, concrete evidence remains elusive, with differing perspectives on the issue. It's crucial to carefully consider all available information and context before arriving at any conclusions.
What do you think Eminem's issue with Diddy is? Do you anticipate Eminem returning with even greater force to unveil Diddy's alleged misdeeds? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. That's all for today. We hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more videos like this.